God is a good God, and you are blessed and highly favored. Choices is here with you, and thanks for allowing us into your space. We are so excited and eager to continue our discussion on the resurrection. Because of the fact that Jesus Christ rose from the dead, we can now be restored to our, uh, to our original position or our rightful place in the presence of our creator. From generation, we were in the presence of God. In the book of Genesis, it is clearly outlined, but because of sin, man became disobedient, rebelled against God and was cast out of God's presence. But because of the resurrection, we are now redeemed and restored. Because he lives, we shall also live and reign with him. What great and exciting news. Let the blessings of God be your portion as we seek to understand the true reason for observing Easter. God bless you and God continue to bless beautiful Guyana. Welcome again and thanks for being with us. As we continue to speak about the, the resurrection and the events leading up to res the resurrection, we pointed out last week that God is never taken by surprise. And uh, before the foundation of the world, God knew what would have been man's state. And because of his love for man, he actually had a plan to bring man back into his presence. Now picture this. In the beginning, as uh, Reverend Singh identified, man had a relationship with God, but because of sin, there was a separation because God cannot um, dwell or live in the presence of sin. And, and so there was a separation. But even though there was a separation, God still had a plan to bring man back to the original state that he was in terms of having that relationship with him. Now, for that restoration to take place, um, blood was critical. And so we have seen in the Old Testament, we had. Um, oxes, we had turtle doves, pigeons, all kinds of animals were used, goats, all kinds of animals were used um, for the atonement, which means to cover, to cover our sins. All kinds of animals were used. But then God in his wisdom said, you know what? I will provide a sacrifice. And the sacrifice came in the person of, of Jesus um, I think he referred to as the as our Goel. Goel means Kingsman Redeemer. Our Goel, Kingsman Redeemer. So Jesus came um, as the final sacrifice with his blood. And what is the, the, the powerful thing behind Jesus' move is that his blood is sufficient and superior. And because of the superiority of his blood, there was no more need for turtle doves and goats and so on. So the sacrifice that he made that, you know, we celebrate Good Friday, the sacrifice that he made was once and for all, final sacrifice. So his blood now was able to create that bridge to bring God, to bring man back into God's presence. So he is our, and we will hear more as we develop the concept, he's our kingsman goal or kingsman redeemer, which means reclaimant. Uh, our security by back. See, he brought us back from our state of sin. And so everything led up to the resurrection because the true manifestation of what was done is that this same man who died, shed his blood, is now alive and alive forevermore. And so Easter is all about our celebrating the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And because he lives, we will live also um, when that time would have come in the day of reckoning. Gentlemen. The notion of redemption is, is such a powerful concept. It speaks to the it speaks to buying back. Something was given over and you are reclaiming, much like what we see happening um, 
with what pawn shops do. You know, people would take their precious jewelry and they, they would pawn their jewelry. It's theirs, but they voluntarily um, give it over. And if they want to have it back, they have to pay a price to get it back. Um, and so it was, and it is, with, with mankind. We were all sold into sin by our own disobedience through Adam. In Adam, we all sin. I know that's a concept that we, you know, you got to work with. You know, it's in the word. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And so this whole world was thrown into a particular zone as a result of uh, the sin of Adam. And so we were then redeemed, but not with corruptible things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We were bought with a price, and therefore we were admonished to glorify God with our bodies. Here, what uh, Romans chapter 5, verse 19 says, and this is, this is very powerful as we continue to massage the whole notion of redemption. For as by one man's disobedience, many were made sinners, so by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Jesus himself is referred to as the second Adam. And so we all died, we all sinned, we all were sold into sin by the first Adam. And the second Adam, once we believe in Jesus, look at the concept. We align ourselves. We come out of sin. We come out of the structure of the first Adam. I mean, we still have life. We're still moving. But we have, we have a different positioning now in the second Adam. Once we believe in him, he has come to bring life and that more abundantly. It's for that very reason, you know, lots of people are upset with a scripture that says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I mean, that's just how it is. And we can't apologize for that because it's written. And um, so redemption is such a powerful concept. And we're going to, I'm sure we're going to massage atonement in the others. Agreed, agreed. Um, uh, the Apostle Paul, in explaining this, you know, what we call Easter, um, I noticed the word Lent has made its way back into. Um, the print media. No, I, I found. And the we... electronic media, the word, the whole concept of Lent. And um, I would like to read what the Apostle Paul said um, concerning this whole series of connected events. And um, it's bigger than cross buns, it's bigger than, than kite. And, and, and Paul said quickly, in, in, in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, I want to read a couple of verses, uh, beginning in verse 3. He says, for what I received, I pass on to you as of first importance, that Christ, this is making the statement, this is a matter of first importance, that Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures, for all of us. Christ died. You know, Paul is a very direct um, person. And so he, he never waffled. He mentioned exactly as he saw it. Christ died for our sins, your sins and mine, according to the scripture. That he was buried. There's a historical um, context. Uh, that he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. This is amazing. Um, you have to read Josephus and you have to read um, other historians or from the Jewish culture. And this, it bothers them. But the scripture says, Christ not only died and was buried, but he rose again and that he appeared. This is the documentary. He appeared, the dead man appeared to Peter, to Cephas. Uh, and, and then to the 12, now you have to understand the Holy Scriptures are very clear. And, uh, and after that, he appeared to more than 500 of the brothers and sisters 
at the same time. So Paul is, is um, underlying, providing the foundation. This is not something that was kept, in, kept secret, kept in a corner, kept in the dark. No, Christ died for our sins, according to the scriptures. And there were eyewitnesses to his resurrection, the fact that he appeared again. And in that context, he died not because he was sadistic. He died for our sins. And his blood, which is final and superior to the blood of animals, provides a covering for us. And uh, when we go before a just God, the only way we are excused is because of the righteous blood of the Lord Jesus. You know, as Reverend Semple earlier um, brought that analogy of the pawn shop as he spoke about redemption, it got me thinking. Um, when people, I mean, in a, in a Guyanese context, we are very familiar with pawn shops, and nobody takes something of limited value or little value to a pawn shop. The things that go to pawn shops are of great value. And the analogy, as I, I, I liked Reverend Semple's analogy, because we're talking about Christ's redeeming power, um, blood that bought us back. Now, obviously, now that means that we are valuable. And that's why we were redeemed by Christ's blood. And the thing about it, if you think about redemption from a pawn shop, Reverend Semple alluded to it briefly, but I want to expand a little bit. You, he said you pay a high price. The high price you pay is not the price that was the money that was exchanged at the time when the, 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 the valuable was handed over. It's a much higher price than that. There's, a, there's some interest on top of that. So the blood that Jesus shed for us was so of such great value and importantly as well you know you know what i i recognize when i looked at reverend sample's analogy usually when we pawn something we have to go and pay back for it ourselves but in this situation our lives were lost our lives were pawned so to speak but we didn't have to buy it back ourselves another came jesus came and he paid the price for us and that for me is very wonderful excellent um, the Our concept of price, price is what is important in this discussion. For what we are recognizing that is that sin comes with a cost. There's a very high cost for sin. And uh, what Jesus did is to pay that price for sin. It is described as atoning, atonement for our sins. So it, it is like, as we speak on the concept of slavery, you, there, you hear the concept of reparation um, being paid. It, it, he, his blood, because of being superior, because of being um, sufficient, his blood was, that was shed paid the price that was required for our sin. There, we, that, there is where you find the concept of freedom coming as a result of the price being paid, liberty being granted unto us. We feel the sense of being redeemed and being restored because he has done the work. He has paid the price for our sins. And it is, it is available to everyone who has come into this revelation, come into this knowledge, come into this understanding that there is no more need for goats and bullocks and lambs because the, the blood of Jesus, which is superior and sufficient, has already paid the price. Reverend Tassano, um, you know, once, I just want to use the analogy, the pawn, the pawn shop seemed to be sticking with me. Um, once one decides to pawn any piece of jewelry or valuable, one is admitting 
that the price he or she receives for that valuable is way below the true value of that piece of jewelry. So when we sin through Adam, the valuable relationship that we had with God was pawned. And so as we, the scripture talks about it in Revelation chapter 13 verse eight, it speaks of the fact that Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God was slain from the foundation. So God had provision in place. But you know, as we would have gone through the Old Testament, the sacrifices that were being made, the bulls, goat, turtle doves that were, the blood that was spilled on the mercy seat, they were temporary. They were insufficient and they were inferior. It's like the price you receive when you pawn something, it's not the true value that you receive. So for that period of time, during the pawning period, you know, when we pawned our relationship, we receive less than we should have received had we had that intact relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. But however, when Jesus Christ came and his blood was spilled for us, his untainted blood, his sinless blood became the perfect sacrifice to restore that righteous, that right, and that valuable relationship. So outside of Jesus Christ's blood, there can be no valued relationship based on the fact that we have been created in God's image and in God's likeness. So the blood or the shedding of Jesus's blood restored us to that right relationship. The pawn shop will never give you the true value but our true value in God has been and can only be restored through the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus absolves us from, from the guilt of, of sin. Uh, you know, when we sin, uh, there's a feeling of guilt. Um, you, you're guilty, whether you feel it or not, you're guilty in terms of, 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 of sin, right? And um, but the blood of Jesus, we have to, we have to, we can't just brush this over um, for those who, you know, might be listening because the, the blood of Jesus absorbs, absorbs the, 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 the person from that guilt. Can you imagine that? Setting you free from that guilty conscience, that guilty action or behavior, and not only set you free, but then regenerating you to the point of you becoming a new man. And, 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 and that is why the scripture in Corinthians talks about any man in Christ is a new creature. All things are passed and the old all things become new. So the blood of Jesus is capable of transforming an individual, not just absorbing the, the individual from sin, but to change the individual. And uh, I think that is so important in terms of, of what Jesus did. And all of these things that he, have, all of those things that he has done, those things came out of, of love, um, love for mankind, endured the cross, went through a whole set of, 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 of trials and, and, and troubles, but never give up one day because of the, of the love that he has for mankind. So the blood of Jesus, again, it, it is so significant in this whole process as we talk about, as we talk about redemption. Even as a human being, which one of us here will say, you know what, I am going to shed my blood for someone. Let us, let us look at this thing seriously. Who will say, you might be in love with, you, with, with everybody or anything, but when it comes to death, this is a whole different ball game. This is where the game changes. But look at this man, Jesus, endured the cross because of his love for mankind, spilled his blood so that God could receive that and make us into a new creature. So we, we are to worship and to serve him and to give him praise. The ultimate so, price. 
has been paid. The ultimate price has been paid in full, in full, and I dare say in fulfillment. And I know earlier we heard uh, Jesus and what he did being described as the second Adam. He is the second Adam. He's also described as the last Adam. Because I know some of us may think, oh, if there's a second, there might be a third, there might be a fourth. So I don't need to wait now. But he is the last Adam. And so this is it. This is the time to hold fast to this redemptive work uh, that has redeemed us and has bought us back and has and God has granted us this gift of eternal life. There's, this is the, Jesus is the way, this one way uh, that God has made for us uh, to receive eternal life. So if you're looking for somebody else outside of Jesus, I, I wish to advise humbly you're looking in vain. Jesus is the way. He is the second Adam. He is the last Adam. The only two people apparently in the race. So Jesus is the second one and the last one. And I, I call on us to access and to... Uh, take hold of this redemptive work. Amen. Christ is so powerful. His blood that was shed, as Dr. Hudson alluded to earlier, once and for all, to take away the sin of the world. It is such a powerful work. It's finally settling the sin question. And, you know, Jim Reeves made popular a song but we all know that it is no secret what God can do. What he's done for others, he'll do for you. We read in John 3, verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. This is the power of the blood of Jesus because of the redemptive work. He reconciled us. He reconciled man to God, restoring that right relationship that we spoke about. And we read also in Romans chapter 5, verse 10 says, For if when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God, we were restored to God. How? By the death of his son, much more being reconciled, we shall be saved by his life. What great hope. This is what the resurrection is all about. Bringing hope, bringing life, bringing peace, bringing joy. Let us receive this gift of salvation, the gift of the Lord Jesus Christ, and live it, that Does life, that, that fu in the fullness, the wholeness that he expects us to live in him and through him. And Jesus didn't die for the perfect. He didn't die for those persons who were living in line, who are, who are trying to do their best. Jesus died for those people who came out from these different positions. Look on the cross. When he was on the cross, the people who were right next to him, he died for them too. Look at the people he redeemed. So don't feel bad. I'm speaking like this because I want you to really hit home with this to really hit home with you, you know? It's not just for those perfect people who look and give them everything together. Jesus died for you in whatever position you're, you're in. You know, you just have to repent, admit, you know, he's the one who's in charge and turn your life around and God is going to be there for you. So don't matter what position you're in, especially around this Easter, just look to him and reach out. Just close your eyes say a prayer, reach out, and uh, then find a, a good Christian home for you to build a relationship. Thank you, Martin. I find uh, what you've said so encouraging because what, it, what Jesus has done is to help reconnect us back to our Father. Whatever the obstacles were, whatever caused us to be so far removed from him, it has now been made clear so that we can come to him. And if we call upon the Lord, he will hear and surely answer us. So we may be living in big house or small house. We may classify ourselves rich or poor. We all have our struggles, but in spite of who we are, God through his son, Jesus Christ, has made it clear so that we can come up to him. That's why it's so easy, call on him he will hear he will answer 
show us things we couldn't even imagine. So what we're saying, Jesus Christ is the best, the best sacrifice that was ever made. Why, what, what, why the sacrifice, you may ask? And some may say, but I don't need to repent. Yes, we all need to repent. Why? Because God is holy and he requires holiness. We heard before what we had was temporary, the sacrifice of lambs and, and doves and, and, and animals. They were, they were temporary. The high priest himself, he had to have been of a certain caliber and he had to have been sinless to enter into the holy of holies. This signifies a temporary, a temporary area, a te the temporary nature of, of, re of repentance. So first we have to repent, as Martin said, and then we have to, but we already have, we can access the Holy of Holies because of Jesus' sacrifice. So even if, if he had not come, we would have still been in that place of temporary sacrifice, where every time we sin, we had to kill a, a, an animal. I wonder if there would have been any animals remaining in the world at, until now, over these years. <laughs> So we don't have to go back to that place anymore. Amen. We all have sinned. Amen. We all have sinned and we've all fallen short. And Jesus, that perfect <laughs> sacrifice, that sinless man who willingly gave his life for you and I, he's the one. He's the one. He's the one. Hallelujah. It's, it's amazing that throughout the entire Old Testament, they were shadows. The entire sacrificial system was set out in the Old Testament, animal sacrifice, was a shadow of what was to come. The coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, and not just his coming and his teaching, but as the Apostle Paul described, the fact that he died for our sins and he was crucified he was buried and most importantly on the third day he rose from that tomb what jesus did you could take to the bank he died for your sins and mine and that's what easter that's what the resurrection, that's what Lent is all about, is being able to benefit from this extreme makeover possibility offered through the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ. God bless you. We'll continue to massage this concept when we meet again. This is Choices. We'll see you next week. We thank you for joining us on Choices today. Remember, you can join us at First Assembly, LNP Durban Street, Workmanville, Georgetown, Guyana, for any of our special services. I'm Salacia on behalf of the set, reminding you that your whole life is the sum of your choices. God bless you.